Hi there guys, I have the pleasure of interviewing James today here at the Animal Rights Foundation in Florida and uh, James has um, a lecture on YouTube called uh, 101 Reasons to Go Vegan and actually it was the lecture that I saw whenever I first kind of took this journey two and a half years ago. I actually, uh, I was at a Barnes and Nobles and I was checking out and talking to the cashier and she told me to watch your lecture online and then I, I watched it and then um, directly afterwards I, I wanted to find more documentaries and um, stuff online to watch and then I watched Earthlings and then I decided from that point you know just to go vegan. That's pretty cool. <laughs> and um, you know what uh, what was your inspiration um, for, for that lecture and kind of what made you uh, what led you to to doing it? I, well, I, my job is to go into schools, universities, and, and, and give presentations on, on veganism and other animal rights issues. So I'm, I'm just trying to promote empathy, which is, I think, sorely lacking in our schools and our culture. Uh, but I mean, I just, I filmed it just so I can improve upon the presentation. And I put it on Vimeo, and then next thing I know, Maybe a few months later, somebody emails me and says, hey, I saw your video on YouTube. I didn't even know, I didn't put it on YouTube, somebody else put it on. And then it just kind of, just went, you know, went on a, on a roll from there. So, I mean, it's great. I'm glad it's up there. Um, but, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't my doing, but I'm glad it's there. So, so where did you say you, you give this lecture at? So I speak to mostly South Florida. Okay. Uh, I travel from, uh, from Miami to Broward County to Palm Beach County. So I uh, cover a fair distance, and that's just, there's dozens and dozens of schools. So I've done, you know, about 90% of the, the high schools in Broward County, 90% of the high schools in Miami-Dade County, uh, West Palm Beach County, or Palm Beach County is not as, as uh, accepting of me coming into schools. But I've also done most of the universities from UM to uh, Broward College to Miami-Dade College to FIU, FAU, Barry, Barry University. So. I, you know, I'm, I'm always kept busy, and the fact that more and more teachers are are already introducing their students to uh, this healthier, more compassionate lifestyle, so it's much easier for me to get in into schools uh, than it ever has been. What uh, what's been some of the feedback from the students after you kind of do the do the lecture? Everybody's receptive. I mean, it's really hard to argue when when you know when you just are sitting down and listening to the to the, the points. So it's, it's kind of, you know, either a student's just going to be like, no, I don't want to do it, and that's it. Or they're just going to say, most students, you know, are, are very receptive and take literature afterwards. I have a, a vegan shopping guide that I give them to help them with the transition. Uh, the joke I make is I can get any kid to go vegan for 12 hours. So after that, um, you know, it's, it's a lot of peer pressure, a lot of family pressure, a lot of school. Schools are not very accommodating. So, you know... Um, it's just a question of whether they'll follow through or not. And so, you know, people always talk about planting seeds. Uh, sometimes it feels like you're planting in a desert, but other times it feels like, okay, this is, this is just one step along the way. So they'll hear it again sometime, you know, in the, in the near future, whether that be in college or afterwards. So, or whatever they do in their life, they'll probably hear it again, the word veganism, just because it's becoming more mainstream. So I, I, some, of the, some of the kids become vegan, some go vegetarian, some eliminate certain products like dairy or eggs and it's just a, a path that everybody is on. You, you said that um, you, you give the lecture to college students, um, do, you, do you also do uh, high school and middle school? Oh yeah, well, most of my time is actually in high schools. I, I kind of prefer the high school uh, environment. Um, I always make the joke that like school is like prison. I'm always guaranteed an audience and like prison the kids can't leave. So, um, so schools are really the optimal place to, to give presentations. Just you, you're always going to have an audience there, and and it's just it's much easier, I think, to get into to high schools um, because they're they're teaching you know what, like 185 days out of the year or something like that, some ridiculous amount. For a college professor, you know they have a set amount of time and they have a curriculum, so sometimes it's harder to fit into that curriculum. But I reach out to um, for high schools, I reach out to science teachers, biology, physiology, anatomy, phys ed teachers health teachers, and then for colleges, you know, you can talk about ethics, uh, philosophy, nutrition, so stuff like that. It's, it's not that difficult. So, so, okay, so a high school student, you know, they're, they're sitting in, in, in class and they're listening to your lecture and, uh, you know, they're interested on going vegan and then they go home 
and then you know they tell their parents all about it and they're excited and they want to go vegan have, have you ever got any pushback from parents after their kids have seen your lectured and they're super pumped about veganism oh yeah I've, I've been banned from half a dozen schools so um, which sucks but no it's I mean I, I don't know what the kid is saying to their parent I mean you know who knows maybe the kid just says oh you know some guy came in and showed this really graphic video of, of animals being slaughtered I don't want to eat meat anymore yeah I understand the parent then would get upset so if the parent is not seeing the presentation the whole you know aspect of the presentation I'm, I make it very clear I'm not telling kids what to do I'm just giving them information and everything is backed up um, by by uh, you know most of it is government statistics from the USDA to uh, the um, National Institute for Health so it's just it's a lot of statistics from the government it's not from outside sources that you would question so uh, everything I talk about is, is factual and then I just get students to come to their own conclusion and a lot of times instead of parents seeing this as an opportunity to talk to their their, their child and then talk to the teacher to figure out why this person was brought in, why I was brought in. Instead they go directly to the principal. And you could have 99 parents who love the presentation but don't say anything and then you have one parent that hates the idea of this and then complains to the principal and the principal doesn't want to rock the boat so I'm told never to come back. So. How, how did you get the end to go to most most of the schools? Again, just reaching out to teachers. I, I avoid principals like the plague. I just, you I know, see. they're not... So te individual teachers individual won't teachers. bite you to their class? Yeah, I to, mean, again, to... most there's so many teachers that are already talking about this. Um, I started over 10 years ago, so like teachers were showing uh, Fast Food Nation or um, Super Size Me or Forks Over Knives. Uh, Food Inc. was a big one. So yeah. a lot of these kids already knew the issue before I even came in. And now it's just, it's just so mainstream with, with more athletes, more celebrities going vegan. It, it, everybody kind of knows it. When I first started, you know, people didn't know the difference between vegetarian and vegan. And, and I think now most people do, or at least they've heard the word vegan. So it's no longer this, this taboo word. And no, no, most people are not associating with like hippies and, and stuff like that anymore. It's, it's it's readily available to people. I, I was actually just in the coffee shop um, the other day, and this girl, this high school girl that was sitting beside me, she actually had a Food Inc. book in front of her that she was reading, and it was a sign from, from class. Nice. And um, I know that definitely kind of lifted my, my vegan heart up. <laughs> I was super, super excited to, to see that, that it was coming to class. Right. And they were actually actually learning about it. Oh yeah, I mean the, the movement is definitely growing, and uh, you know there's there's going to be hurdles, and obviously there are, but um, but it's definitely a growing movement. And so so what's what kind of inspired you, um, you know, to to make that shift and go vegan yourself back back in the day, um, and, and how long have you been vegan for? Like 16, 17 years. I don't know the exact date or anything like that. Um, I I went vegetarian in in, in college, and. Uh, and then afterwards, uh, when I graduated, I, I read the, the book Animal Liberation by Peter Singer. And it's like the, the Bible of, of animal rights. And it just made sense. It was just so logically easy to understand. So it's just like, all right, well, if I don't have to consume animals and it's not even in my best interest, then, then why participate in this? So that was my transition. Um, but yeah, I was, I was a meat eater you know, for 18 years of my life and never really questioned it. So I, when I give presentations, I always try to you know, think about how, how would I have taken if I was the student in that class. Yeah. And my thing is I, sarcasm. I love just to be sarcastic, yeah. just a very sarcastic person. So I just try to get them to laugh at their own behaviors. And if you can get somebody to laugh at their own behaviors, you, you've won half the battle. Um, I, it's like a game of chess. If you, you, you should know, you know their move before they even know their move. So you're two steps ahead. So I'm just, I'm just trying to answer their questions before they even think about it, um, what the question is. And by the end of the presentation, I, when I talk to adults, you know, the presentation is called 101 Reasons to Go Vegan. But when I talk to, to youth, high school and college, for the most part, I, they don't know who, who I am. They just think, um, you know, oh, is he a substitute or something, or somebody who has tattoos on their neck or something. So I already have, like, street cred. I come in there, and, uh, and I don't say the word vegan until the very end. So, you know, it's like, because it people still have, uh, con you know, connotations of what veganism yeah. is. So. I avoid the word at all. And then at the very end, they go, this is what veganism is. They're like, oh, okay, well, that didn't sound so bad at all. So it's just, you know, making sure that you're, you're smart about how you approach it. And, uh, you know, it's, 
most people most people are compassionate. Most people, if 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 given the opportunity to 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 have the information presented to them, you know they'll they'll take it and they'll hopefully they'll apply it. If not, they'll at least understand the issue better, so they won't have these negative connotations anymore. So to somebody out there that is maybe new to veganism and they're kind of wondering what to eat, yeah. what does uh, what do you, James, like to, to make that's, that's easy or what are, what are some of your favorite things to uh, eat? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I can barely boil water. So, I mean, that's, you know, spaghetti with marinara sauce, meatless meatballs. But I also just, I mean, I love, I love salads, but not just like your, your salad of, of a bed of lettuce. Uh, no, I mean, I have like this beans and avocados and, and, you know, sprouted organic tofu in there and it's just, just do it up. So just a huge, huge bowl of, of everything. Um, and you know, like maybe a balsamic vinaigrette or something like that. So, you know, I just pretty basic, nothing really extravagant. Uh, yesterday I had Brussels sprouts and asparagus, which stuff I used to hate as a kid. Now it's just like, I'm popping Brussels sprouts like candy. So, uh, I love mango. It's got a mango tree. Everybody's mm. got a, mango trees are everywhere. It's funny oh, to I see love people. Mango trees. It's funny to see people buy mangoes in the grocery store when you can just grab it off somebody's yard. Um, you know, just just tons of fruit. I try to eat more more vegetables. I'm big into like hummus, so I just end up you know getting a lot of raw vegetables like broccoli, cauliflower, carrots, pea pods, and just basically use it as a spoon for my hummus. So that's how I get my greens in. But it's real easy when you think about it. I mean, there's just there's a replacement for everything. So if you want like chicken, you just replace it with veggie chicken. You want a hamburger, there's a veggie burger. You know, there's the Beyond Meat Burger, which is just tastes exactly like meat, or at least what I remember meat tastes like. So you go to TGI Fries, go to Burger Fi, and get the Beyond Meat Burger. It's it's no different. It's got it's got actually I think more protein than your regular hamburger. Uh, it's got less less uh, no saturated well it's got less saturated fat, no cholesterol. So it's just like a healthier version. It tastes the same. Why not? That's really what it comes down to. Why not? Yeah. Definitely. So, and the price is fairly comparable. Animal doesn't have to uh, to die for it, and then yeah. way better for the environment, and oh, yeah. better for people's health too. Yeah. So many different aspects. Right. So, um, how how long have you been with the Animal Rights Foundation of Florida for? That's going on eleven years. Okay. What 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 exactly do you guys do here? So, Animal Rights Foundation is uh, founded in 1989. So it's coming on 30 years. And just been a voice for for animals in in Florida, and just basically teaching respect and compassion to to animals. And and again, most people care. Most people actually, you know, don't want to cause animals harm, and and they they're opposed to animals suffering. It's just that you know, in our lives, we just do things that they kind of contradict uh, or suppress that that those feelings. And a lot of it is just ignorance, just not knowing how we're supporting animal cruelty. Obviously, you know, the animals we eat, we don't understand the, the consequences of that to, to the animals, to our health, and to the environment. Uh, but we also, we work on, on many different levels. You know, we, we try to get laws, you know, better laws on the book to protect animals. Um, we, we fight for, again, all animals, whether it's dogs and cats or, or animals living in captivity. So, you know, we, we're opposed to animals in, in circuses. And, you know, one of the big victories was Ringling Brothers no longer you know, subjecting their, their elephants and tigers and other animals to, to torture. Okay, so that was you guys. That well, it was us and many others, but yeah, I mean, we, we, we were protesting every year outside of American Very Airlines cool. Arena. So, um, you know, and they, that was the last, that was basically, they made the announcement that when we were protesting that that was going to be their, their last, this is their last tour. So, I mean, it's, a, it's a big victory. It's, it's big, and more of these victories are happening with, like, SeaWorld ending their, uh, you know, breeding. Uh, orca whales in captivity. So, you know, we're on the right path. It's just, you know, like every other movement before it from women's rights and civil rights and, and you know, workers' rights. It's slow, you know, it's a, it's a slow movement and, and we're just constantly evolving. This isn't the pinnacle of, of humanity. We're, we're evolving to something better, something more compassionate, hopefully. So, uh, how exactly, um, you, you said you guys are, are working to change some of the laws and stuff how how you know how do you even go about that you know so oh yeah sorry um, so we've been working with um, just the local cities the commissioners and the mayors uh, and and South Florida has adopted throughout the like over I think 40 cities communities have adopted a law banning the, the retail sale of cats and dogs 
So we're not, we're not opposed to cats and dogs having cats. We're, we're opposed to the breeding of cats and dogs coming from puppy mills. And so puppy mills are large breeding warehouses where females are just forced to become pregnant. They have their puppies, and then their puppies are shipped off to different uh, pet stores throughout the country. And it's just a very cruel industry. And, uh, and it's not very well, well regulated by the government. So we're, government has failed. And so we're just basically taking over and saying, hey, look, this is what we adopt. We're, we're, we're proposing an ordinance that bans the sale of, of the retail sale of cats and dogs. Instead, we're promoting adopting. Go to your local shelter, go in the pound. Um, PetSmart, Pet Supermarket, Petco, they all work with shelters when it comes to their dogs and cats, not other animals, but dogs and cats. And so we're just saying, hey, you know, there are millions of cats and dogs being euthanized. Um, every year in the United States, and this doesn't have to be this way. So, support your shelter. And these dogs and cats did nothing wrong. You know, they just, they just, you know, they, they, they didn't do anything wrong. The, the, the animals in the shelter are just, you know, forgotten victims. So, so if anybody, you know, out there that's watching this wants to get involved in the Animal Rights Foundation, what, what's some stuff that they can do to uh, help out? Uh, you can sign up for our email alerts. Just go on to the ARF webpage, which is ARFF.org, so ARFF.org, and then sign up for our email alerts, and we'll let you know what's going on in your community and how you can help out. Uh, you can follow us on Facebook, which is Facebook forward slash, uh, or Facebook.com forward slash uh, Animals Florida, or just, again, look up Animal Rights Foundation of Florida on Facebook. And uh, yeah, and so you can, you know, whether it's l writing a letter to the editor, um, certain issues that are coming up, the there is uh, Amendment 13 for the November election, which is going to give th the people of Florida the opportunity to ban uh, greyhound racing. And greyhound racing is an incredibly cruel uh, industry. Uh, every three days a greyhound dies uh, in the greyhound industry, and it's just it's, these animals are basically living most of their life, 20 to 23 hours, in cages, and it's, it's, not, it's not a sport. Uh, we wouldn't do this to any yeah. other dog. So, if you don't agree with it, you have the opportunity to now um, use your voice. And, and so vote. Come November election, vote yes on Amendment 13. Uh, we also do demonstrations. Right now we're doing uh, protests. I think we're going to be doing it every other weekend, every other Saturday at the Galleria Mall in Fort Lauderdale. They're okay. opening up uh, a marine park, uh, which is just insane because it's less than a mile away from the ocean. So it's just the absurdity of it is... is, is Quite apparent, um, but you know, animals don't belong in captivity, and, and these animals, many of them, were captured from the ocean. So you've taken a, a healthy animal from the wild and brought them in, so that we can just observe them. It, it teaches kids the complete opposite of empathy. It teaches them that it's it's okay for humans to exert their power on these animals. And no, if the roles were reversed, we wouldn't want to be put in captivity. So most people don't want to be in jail. So why do we why do we jail these animals? Um, and so if you're, you're, if you're opposed to it, please come on out, help us support um, the cause. So again, we'll be protesting next Saturday, which would be, what, the 11th? And uh, we do it from 12 to 2, right when it's blazing hot outside. And uh, just holding up signs and handing out literature and just letting people know what's happening. Awesome. Yeah. Very cool. What, um, something that I find interesting and that's really kind of inspiring to me is like anytime I, I meet people like you that are really kind of motivated to do kind of like a selfless act and really kind of motivated to help others I, I'm just it, it kind of interests me in like what kind of inspires you and the fact that you know there's there's so many different things that people can value in life and maybe that would give people fulfillment in life whether that's you know going after making money or whether that's having a lot of material possessions or whether that's um, you know, maybe doing drugs and alcohol or um, you know, partying or um, there, there's so many different things in life, but it's like you've chosen kind of the cause of fighting for animal rights and stuff as a way to kind of give yourself meaning. And it's like, what, what do you think kind of led you to have that you know, that, that passion and that drive to, to fight for animal rights, you know, throughout the years for over a decade now? Well, so a couple things. When I, when I first started college, uh, I did a work study 
uh, to get some extra money. And, and so one of the opportunities was working at the YMCA, basically working with the teens. And I was like, that sounds like fun. I'm going to get paid to pay, play basketball. And that's really what it was. And so it was, it was fun to, to basically just hang out and, and create programs for, for teenagers. And then once I became vegan, I realized, wow, like I have this you know, passion for, for animal rights and how can I um, combine it with, with my passion for working with, with youth and, and empowering them. And that's really what it comes down to. I'm, I'm trying to empower them through animal rights. And it's not just about animals, it's all interconnected with the environment, with their health. And so I'm trying to empower them overall to, to basically live a healthier lifestyle something that's positive for them, for animals, and for the environment. So you can do it for selfish reasons. You can do it outside of yourself. And, uh, and a lot of it is just anger. You know, once I understood the truth and realized that I was lied to, that, that, um, that I was sacrificing my compassion and health um, because of these stories that we were told as children, I, anger is good. It's just a question of how do you harness the anger to do something positive with it. Nobody likes that angry vegan, you know, unless they're, they're good at, you know, being an angry vegan, you know, being sarcastic, being funny, and, yeah. and, and that's what it comes down to. It, yeah. How can you use that anger to 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 do to do good? And so, you know, hey, I I've been my 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 job is basically I'm trying to get myself laid off. Like I would love for my boss to be able to come up to me like James, we don't need you anymore. You're done. I'm like great, I can do something else in my time. So I'm trying to get laid off, uh, you know. But it's 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 a lot of work, and but you know. There's so many times where I'm frustrated by, by the reaction or just the, the, the lack of, uh, uh, or the, the, empathy, uh, the, the lack of empathy I see, or the, just the just idea of like people feeling like they can't do anything or feeling um, helpless. And so I'm trying to, to basically just keep that anger alive, you know, because that, that, that spark is what we kind of need to just basically keep us going. So when I when I get down on the movement, I remember like why am I doing this? You know, that anger comes back, and it's like all right now I I'm feel like you know it's like my Red Bull the energy. Red Bull sucks by the way. <laughs> yeah, that's basically what keeps me going. All right, well, thanks for uh, thanks for talking yeah, and doing thanks. this interview today, and thanks for doing what you're doing. It's been thank you. Um, it's been uh, cool cool media and figuring out, you know, what, what kind of things motivate you and um, hearing about your, your journey. Yeah. And uh, definitely thanks again for posting that lecture because that's ultimately one of the things that led me to being vegan and cool. sitting here today interviewing you. Yeah, and I think, I mean, another thing is that, you know, hopefully more people will, will do what you're doing. You know, social media is, is key to this movement. But giving presentations, like I said, school is just such an easy uh, way of promoting it to so many people. And again, the internet is great just because you're reaching millions. But you know, getting that, that not one on one, but that like one on thirty, you know, intimate setting where you're you're given maybe sixty to ninety minutes to really discuss the issue. So if that's something that people are interested, you know, you can always contact me, James at arff.org. I can help you out with like you know materials that you might need. But you know, just. So just another way of promoting the cause. So what you're doing, what other people are doing, just keep doing it. Keep fighting the good fight. Awesome. And if, if you guys haven't seen uh, his lecture online, 101 Reasons to Go Vegan, I'll put a link below where you can definitely check that out. And um, I, I, I really do like the way that you added the humor into it. Thanks. I, I was definitely, there's lots of parts that are pretty funny um, Thanks. to it as well. <laughs> but um, thanks for... Thanks doing it and yeah. uh and good luck you know growing the movement and doing what you're doing cool thank you appreciate it